Hello and welcome. And today in this circle calling, we're going to talk about anxiety and how that's affecting in menopause. So let me just share my screen. This is giving me anxiety, sorting out the tech on here. So let me press, let me press. Let me move myself as I'm in the way. Let me put the presenter mode on. Make things a bit easier. So, move myself out of the way there. So, managing stress and anxiety during menopause. This is something that many women struggle with at this stage. So, hello, welcome to our regular now meetings for menopause, midlife, and all the, that goes with them. So what are we going to be doing on our little meetings once a week? We're going to think about the topic, or we're going to look at the topic of anxiety and stress. I think I'm getting more stressed about the tech than anything because it's just doing funny things, which isn't helping. So we're gonna look at why, for starters, we get a little bit more stressed during this phase, during the menopausal transition. What is it that's making us feel more stressed, giving us increased anxiety, which then affects our self-esteem and our self-confidence. What is that all about? What's going on there? So who am I to talk to you about this? So my name is Tracy Montgomery. I run Menopause, Midlife and all the, the Facebook group, if you want to come and join us. I'm an older single mum to an amazing teenage daughter. Yeah, teenage. So she's one end. I'm the other end of that there spectrum. So, yeah, this household can get a little bit fraught sometimes. It has done. Things are starting to calm down now because I'm coming out into postmenopause. And, well, she's 18. So it's what do we expect. So what do I know about menopause? What's my menopause journey being like? So the average age to go through or start the menopausal transition is in our mid forties. Menopause is stated as being um, the average age as 52. So we know we had that amazing event, amazing, it's not an amazing event, that world event that happened four years ago. And that increased our anxiety and our stress anyway. So I thought some of the symptoms I was having at that time were related to what was going on in the world around us until I had one horrendous weekend when I was in so much pain. I was shaking, I was crying, I couldn't physically move. Um, it was totally beyond anything that could happen. Now, this set alarm bells off with me. So my mum went through perimenopause in a very short space of time. She was in her early 40s and she'd been out for um, an event and had to be brought home. She happened to be wearing white. It didn't stay white very long. So you can imagine what happened. And she ended up having to have a blood transfusion. It was very traumatic. But that was my mum's menopausal journey. She was in postmenopause then from that event. So I had thought that because this happened to my mum in her early 40s, that was the sort of thing that might happen to me. But I was 55. So <laughs> I thought that I had been lucky and swerved the menopause symptoms, but I actually hadn't. And by the time I'd got to talking to a doctor, I had to talk to a doctor on the weekend that everything happened because I physically couldn't do anything. I couldn't move. I was flooding everywhere. Like I say, shaking, sweating. So I had to phone a doctor. Doctor referred me to gynecology, which obviously didn't happen straight away. I was given painkillers at the time to help deal with things. And I actually got to the gynecologist for the gynae appointment. 
Now, bear in mind that the gynecologist I went to see was female. I walked through the door, through the door, through the door, and she took one look at me and my notes and decided that the first words that would come out of her mouth were, you're a bit old to be going through this. Thanks. It's actually happening. So I started on HRT. So I am now on number of HR. I am on patches. I've had a coil fitted. I also have gel for those times when it goes a little bit pear shaped. Still, yeah, I know. These things happen. So that's how I can relate to anyone else that's having problems with menopause. Now, at the time, I wasn't working. I was caring for my daughter. Now, don't get me wrong, my daughter is in a lot of ways physically fit, but she does have a condition whereby it's classed as a disability, but she does get up out and about and walks around. So that's not. So I hadn't been working for a while. I'm a qualified science teacher. So I sort of like knew a little bit about what should have been happening or going on. So that sent me on this path of discovery and finding out why and how some women experience more severe symptoms than others. So the thing is, when we hit puberty, we talk about puberty quite a lot, don't we? Oh, it's your hormones, they're making you act like this. They're giving you these symptoms. We don't talk about these hormones so much when we get to perimenopause. We don't talk about perimenopause so much. I know, I know it's been in the news a lot. But there are still assumptions. Assumptions being that when these hormones start doing one and fluctuating and we get all these symptoms and we come out through that, that that's it. Menopause is over and done with. Dust it. Got my badge. No. You're in post-menopause then. And you're still going to have lots and lots of symptoms. Slightly different symptoms, but you're still going to have lots of symptoms. So our female hormones are our nurture hormones. They're there to help and support us. And when they start to fluctuate, that impacts our stress levels and our mood. So we know we get these common symptoms, the hot flashes, the night sweats, the insomnia. And these can also lead to or be part of our stress reactions. So the female hormones are there to make us feel good so we can look after others. They're our nurture hormones. They give us the confidence to support. And when our brain doesn't get those signals anymore, what do we do? We get stressed and we get confused. Our brain gets confused. So we need to start looking at improving how we manage our stress and what techniques that we can use. Now, I know some of you are going to think this is a bit woo-woo and you're not going to want to do any of this, but there are certain things that we know as we age we should be doing. We should be relaxing. We should be doing calming exercises. So simple things that we know help with stress are things like deep breathing. I don't know if you've heard of square breathing, if you've heard of counting breathing, there's the step breathing. There's lots of different breathing techniques that we're taught to manage stress. So during menopause, when we are getting stressed, we can also utilize those. Guided imagery or guided meditations, they can help to calm us down because when our hormones change, we may not be able to regulate so well. They might also think about things, calming exercises, such as your yogas, your Tai Chi's, stretching, just gentle stretchings, help 
reduce our stress levels. This brings us on to the mindfulness and the meditation. Mindfulness, we talk about a lot nowadays, about being aware of ourselves, being mindful of what we are doing. So there are many tools that we can call on to help cultivate and look after our emotional needs, our re resilience to what is happening, and it helps to calm our minds meditations so this is going to be not a full meditation but a meditation can help so in a meditation we're just going to do something very calming now that can help and you can look up these you can we have full meditations on our site as well or you can look onto youtube or podcasts where you do meditations just to calm everything down so the first thing that i would ask you to do is to take deep slow breath in hold that breath for three and let that breath out for six just count Six, five, four, three, two, one. And again, breathe in. Hold for three. And release. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And what I would like you to think of is taking yourself for a walk by the side of some slow babbling water. I want you to listen to the water. Listen to the water as it flows past. And I want you to let that water take your stress away. Put your stress into the water. And then you're going to breathe in, hold for three, and then breathe out. Five, four, three, two, and one. So that, obviously not a full meditation, but that is a calming so that you can, one, calm your mind, and two, remove the stress. So the stress is gone. You put the stress away from you and it's gone. Now we're doing that because, if you remember in our previous chats, we talked about the fact that the brain is still looking for the signals that it had pre-menopause. They've now gone. The brain hasn't got those backup signals. Those hormones are no longer working. So the brain will send out the stress signals. So we want to learn to calm those. Now, if they don't work, we can try some cognitive behavioral strategies. Now, not everybody likes these. Not everybody can do them, but these are things that can change how you think. So one of the easiest ones is when you just tap. So you have a stress and you just tap and you can tap for a certain amount of time. You can do 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Or you can tap until you feel the stress go. So those taps can be on a key point, often just on the dip on the neck or on the wrist. They can help with removing the stress. So you're focusing on what you're doing rather than what's actually causing it. So it gives it a different frame within your mind and what you are considering. So we then want to look 
as we age, we want to look at this sort of um, what we're consuming, our nutrition. We need to think about our diet because we know that the foods we consume are going to affect how our body behaves, and therefore how we react to stress. So if you are eating lots of processed foods, high sugar then your body is not getting the nutrients that it actually needs. We think about this more as we age. The importance of nutrition as we age becomes heightened because we are aware of certain things that aren't happening or more things are happening at this stage. So we want to have a balanced diet. We want to try and incorporate uh, mood boosting foods that doesn't mean that they are things like 62 chocolate bars dark chocolate can help increase serotonin levels in small amounts but we want to be thinking about fruits the berries our leafy vegetables increasing our omega-3 fatty acids because they help us think and feel better about ourselves. So if we look towards a Mediterranean diet, that can help us feel better about ourselves. Now we know that during our perimenopause that sleep can be an issue. We can get or become more insomniac than we were previously. We can have disturbed sleep patterns. We can have night sweats that then disturb those sleep patterns. So during this perimenopausal phase, we want to think about how we can improve our sleep hygiene. So we want to think about the routines as we come towards bedtime. We want to try and keep our bedtime at the same time as much as we can. I appreciate some of you may be on shift work and that can't be done but we want to try and get the same amount of sleep in every 24 hours. We want to make sure that our room is comfortable. It is of a cool temperature, not too hot. And that we do the things that we associate even more with hygiene, like keeping our bedding clean and cool as well. Now, what can happen during perimenopause is that we find that some of our friends have, like I said earlier, they've got the bad, they've gone through this. Others don't want to know. So having a community around you, such as this one, to help you, to support you, where people understand that your needs are going to have changed is invaluable at this stage. So look to your friends because you possibly have some that are going through similar family. There are other support groups out here, out here, out there. And as I said, menopause, midlife and older, where we can help support you through this volatile life stage. Think about how you can reduce stressful changes during your transition through menopause. So you could change some of your lifestyle and how you go about your day. So you may need to consider reducing your workload. Now I know, I know that for some, this can be something that's quite, not only just frightening, but also something that is difficult to manage because you may have other workloads, not just your paid job, you may have caring workloads as well. And as we go through this, we will discuss certain things that may help to change your workload and your lifestyle. Make sure that you prioritise your own self-care activities. Remember, if you are not looking after yourself, you can't look after others. It just won't happen. 
and set realistic goals to help you minimize the stress. Okay, Netflix every now and then is quite good, but Netflix for 24 hours possibly is not a good idea, even though you might feel like it. And make sure that you are setting boundaries on your time and you. If you are stretched too thin, you're not going to be able to support yourself and therefore you're not going to be able to support anybody else. So think about prioritizing your commitments, your time, and how you delegate that time. You may, if all else fails, well, no, I shouldn't say if all else fails, but you may need to seek professional help and professional resources to help you through some of this. And that does not mean that you're not going to come out the other side. It does not mean that you're going to have this forever. It just could be a now, but it is something that you may wish to consider. Maybe if you are asking within your support group whether this should be something that you're considering, that would give you a little bit more confidence to go forward. So by learning about what's going on with this life phase, by looking after yourself, you're empowering yourself by being able to support yourself. You can support others much better. And it can also lead to new personal growth, new self-discovery. And it can be quite enlightening because you're going to end up going in different areas. So we hit on something that can be a key stressor, a key worry when we went through this with our workload and the possibility that because we are so fatigued, because we are getting so tired with our work date that we struggle and we may worry about what our future holds. We may find that our personal circumstances have changed. Now, this is something that you might not want to talk about, but there is significant increase in the number of women who are finding themselves on their own post 50. And that can have implications on not only your anxiety levels, your self-confidence, but your finances as well. So when we come to look at future casting, that's what we want to talk about. Your financial side, your financial stability, because if your finances and your retirement plans are set, that helps you. That increases your brain health because you're not stressing over something. It reduces a stressor. That is there. So being worried about your future finances can increase your stress. Being not so worried about your finances can help reduce it. So what do we need to be able to future cast? I've just done that bit. I put that in there already. We also need to be aware that not only do relationships break down on a personal level, but relationships can break down on a career-based professional level. And that can be because you are either physically not capable of working at the same level you were before or psychologically because of this stress. Now, this is a known statistic and it's a known fact, but it's not something that gets talked about a lot and it's not something that gets remedied a lot other than it's that time of life. So what we would like to look at then is future-proofing. Future-proofing your finances so that you're relaxed, you can care for yourself. 
And maybe if your financial circumstances have changed because of your personal circumstances or if your financial circumstances have changed because your job has had to change, getting another job might not be logistically possible. You might not be able to fit it in. You might not be able to physically maintain that amount of work at the level that would be required. So oh, it's gone backwards. Why have I gone backwards? I was there. So other than a job, see, technology causing me stress. So other than going out and getting another job, there are other opportunities that are out there that can help you acquire a certain level of finances as you go into your later years, into your retirement years, or maybe before your retirement years. And these can be in a world that we might want to dip into, but we think is out of our reach, like traveling. We might want to think about Making money online, I know, I know, before you say it, there are ways to make money online that are legitimate and that are quite easy. So I'm here to help signpost you to options that aren't another job, that can fit around everything else and that can help reduce the stress and the anxiety. So as you may have seen, if you scan the code, you can book a call with me and we can discuss not how only how you navigate through menopause, but also the possibility of improving your finances for the future. So hope you've enjoyed that. Follow me on social media and join me for our next episode. Same time, same place. I will stop sharing first. I will talk to you soon. It's been a pleasure. Bye for now.